for deciding to spend a part of your evening with us on Voices of Africa at Chat Night. Sister, don't be the reason why another woman is crying in her home. I'm not speaking to you women watching now. I am speaking to that woman who is the reason why some woman is crying, sobbing agonizing in her home. Now, what's behind the flourishing side chicks market? These markets boom while marriages are up in flames. Ladies and gentlemen, to drill down on this topic, I invited Mr. I'd rather say Major Ndiashi Ngante and uh, Dr. Mrs. Veronica Fortu. She is a regular at Chat Night Africa when we began this platform three years ago. I want to thank her sincerely for always responding positively to our call. Join me now in welcoming first Major Ndashi Ngante on the platform. Thank you, audience. And now I introduce to you, with great delight also, Dr. Mrs. Veronica Fortu. <laughs> this is what both of my guests have promised you. It's going to be a show which produces scorching heat. Ladies and gentlemen, once more, welcome to Voices of Africa at Chat Night. It's hot night tonight at Chat Night. My name is Divine Chamukong, and I am anchoring this broadcast from Washington, D.C., metropolitan area. First question to my guest now on the platform, Mrs. Dr. Mrs. Veronica Fortu. Mrs. Veronica Fortu, why do you think, why do you believe that some woman is crying, some marriage woman, married woman is crying in her home and the cause is another woman sitting somewhere? We call her a side chick. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Chan Night Africa, for having me on on this show tonight. It's a privilege. So... Side cheek is just one of the reasons why a woman can be crying in her home. Um, but there's no doubt that the side cheek market has become very popular, whether we like it or not. 
and um, it's causing some distress and some constraints in homes because it's taking the husband's attention away from the wife and and you know it causes um emotional and psychological and mental and even physical hurts and it's it's something that it's it's to me it's like a pandemic and and i think that we need to do a whole lot to eradicate that pandemic the reason why i made the statement that don't be the reason why another woman is crying is uh, because it, this keeps going on um, because women make themselves available. I think that if we should, if women should stand up and say that I'm not going to be anybody's um, um, second class, I'm not going to play that place because the minute when you make yourself available to a married man, you're telling him that you 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 you're. you're you, you're, you're comfortable with the fact that he's disrespecting you. Yes, because I call that disrespect. You're comfortable with the fact that, you know, um, you don't have, he's treating you like a second class and somebody who has no standards. And you're comfortable with that. And the message is that if being a single woman or married woman, if you uh, draw the line, and say that I don't want to play that role, I don't want to be that. You can imagine um, you being in the home as a married woman and then you know that your husband is out there with, an, uh, with another person. It's, it's just emotionally draining and emotionally torturing. And, and I think that this whole pandemic is going to be eradicated when women put their foot on the ground and start saying that I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to be part of what's going on. I don't want to be part of because the men are doing it because they have this, 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 um, they, uh, the availability, you know, you make yourself available. And so the man is, is there. We, we need to be able to help our sisters, help our mothers to, to keep their marriages. Marriages are really suffering. They, 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 it's seriously, it's it, because every little thing that happens in the home now, the man has to run to go. Um, console himself with the second class or what would I say rebound I, I don't want to call them that a second class I don't want to call them less dehumanizing because it's a woman too even though you're a side chick you're a woman and I don't want to put them in that place but you will put yourself in that position when you become when you accept to play that role that you know that this man is married I don't care what anybody says ten, nine out of ten women always know they know that the man is currently in a relationship or the man is married. So it's uh, it's a bullshit when I hear they say that I didn't know that he was married. That's a lie. Nine out of 10 women, they're always aware that the man is married or committed. And because, let me say this, it's easy. You know the definition of, of, of a side chick? A side chick, you're becoming... It's, 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 you're that person who does absolutely nothing for a project. You're being rewarded for doing nothing. You're being rewarded for work that somebody else is doing. Because it's the wife in the house that takes care of that underwear that, you know, if you go to the bathroom and a little poop is, it's your wife who sees it. It's your wife who takes care of everything. It's wife in the home. So the side chick is just there. So it's the person that is receiving a good grade for all the hard work that another person is doing. That's what a side chick is. You're reaping the benefits of a relationship without actually putting in the work. Okay, right? we'll, come, so we'll, we'll, we'll continue with you. I, I, I know that um, <laughs> you came ready to fire on this, uh, on, on this show. Let me uh, bring in um, the uh, uh, second guest to hear what he has to say as his opening um, uh, remarks, ladies and gentlemen, please join me now in welcoming Mejon Dyashi Ngante. Thank you, uh, studio audience. First of all, sir, I want to thank you 
for your services to the country. You are um, a senior officer in the U.S. military. Um, you are major, so I'll be addressing you, Major Ndeshi Ngante. Uh, you've been um, in the U.S. military as an officer for 20 years. So I want to thank you for your services to the country. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The question I have for you, sir, Major, is do you believe that there is a proliferation of side chicks market? And if you do, what accounts for it? Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to chat with you and, uh, and to, be, to talk and learn from this platform, especially from my uh, prolific and a uh, very, very uh, learned uh, sister, uh, Mrs. Dr. Mrs. Uh, Fortune. You know, we we almost from the same house, but uh, we thousands of miles apart. And uh, so the uh, issue about the proliferation of the side chic market, uh, that is, uh, I, I want to look at it there is the issue of side chicks, and then there is uh, what I, where I depart from the question or the premise is that there is a proliferation as if in recent years or decades, there has been more activity of that nature. I, uh, I am not supporting or denying because I've been trying to scope around to see what literature does exist to support that there's been an increase in the amount of, or the number of uh, this kind of activity. There's still little to uh, support that claim. However, there is no doubt that there is uh, this uh, time immemorial practice of concubinage and uh, side check. That's what we talk about here. So it's happening. It's been happening for time immemorial. And there are several reasons why it's happening. Most of them, uh, Dr. Fortune already mentioned most of them, what we know, those are anecdotal ones that we know. And, uh, if, but I will boil it down, if I want to overgeneralize it, I would say it's more cultural. Till now, our social life has been, it's a patriarchal system. We live in a society where men had always been the dominant uh, species among the uh, human uh, among humans, the, the male species has been dominant. They set the tones. They define everything, and everything else is like it's relation to the man. So yes, for that reason, any the men can go around doing things, and they you don't hear about sight guy too much, even though it happens. And now you start to hear about them. But the side chick is all cultural. I'll just, the reason I say this, uh, I was looking at some information. And by the way, I am no expert in this field, but I just want to be here and learn from all of you and maybe share what I know. So, in, for instance, in, in the Philippines, uh, the penal code actually does address, there is, uh, the penal code addresses the issue of, uh, Marriage, this issue of uh, chastity, and there is actually a crime code in the you know in the crimes in the penal code against uh, concubinage, against uh, uh, adultery, and against uh, uh, on nullity. So in Philippines, they don't have a divorce. The laws don't allow a divorce, but it allows for uh, to be able to nullify. So for a man, I just put it this way: if uh, adultery is only committed by women in the law. It's mostly committed by women. And then concubinage is committed by men in, by their law. But what they do is they assign different levels of punishment. In Philippines, you can go to jail, a woman can go to jail for up to six years for committing adultery. And a man can go to jail up to four years for uh, concubinage issues. And to the reason in that culture why side chicks proliferate or they do occur, one of the learned reasons is because it's difficult to achieve a divorce. You cannot get a divorce. So you can only request your marriage to be nullified. 
in, in order to nullify, you have to be, you know, you cannot be an unfaithful person in a relationship and then you request to nullify. So the women are unable to remain in a relationship and, well, and have an affair. But the men can do it and they get a lesser punishment. The, men, the women, if they do it, it gets six years. Men can do up to four, but they seldom do it. So for the woman to achieve, no, to get uh, to get the marriage nullified so they can go away, they have to stay in it. So why would they do that? Why would women want to go into that relationship? Most of them will go into, will prepare to have those side activities, side concubinage, where the men support them and the woman will not ever be charged with that crime of concubinage because that woman is not married. So that supports them to be more concubines than to come get into marriage and struggle to divorce them later. That's one thing. Now, in, in Africa, I, I looked at issues in Kenya and uh, an article published uh, in 2020 indicates three main reasons why the men do it. So the women, first, the first reason is that everybody does it. It's part of the culture, so everybody does it. So men accept it, the women accept it, so they do. Second reason is because it's uh, men can get away with it easily. So the women, women now they're forced to just go along and try to get it. And the third one is age. Most women who participate in side chick affairs are young. They are young and they are very, very inexperienced and uninformed. They really don't understand the full value of a relationship. So they stick, they try to get the flame and try to get the excitement of a, of, of a sporty relationship, sporty life. And the men who are married, who participate in this activity are usually a little bit older. A little bit older in the later, in the later 35, uh, um, uh, 45 of the boat. And those men can easily afford many things in terms of finance, uh, intellectual, and psychological support to the young women who don't care too much about a stable life. So that's the main one of the main reasons. So I, I think that's my uh, starting point. And there's a lot we can talk about uh, some of the reasons why they do this. Thank you, Major uh, Ngante. I'll be uh, back with you again on the platform. Let me now bring on uh, Dr. Mrs. Uh, Veronica Fortu once more. Um, Mrs. Uh, Fortu, there is a market. We call it a market because there is a buyer and a seller. <laughs> you seem to lay the blames squarely on the feet of the woman, the side chick. Why is that so? Um, not necessarily so. Um, that I, I made that statement. Sometimes when I make statements, um, that means something must have happened and I come out to address it. Um, before I, I answer that question, I just wanted to go back a little bit to the question that you asked, um, Major um, Gante, about the reasons why. Um, like he said, that that uh, question is broad and there is room for other um, um you know, um, arguments. And I was just reading somebody here is saying that that <laughs> women to have a uh, psych men and you were talking about nurses in America and stuff like that. And then so I can know where you're coming from. You know that women having psych men is not something that is not was notorious. It's just that it happening and there's a reason for that. But maybe that's a topic for another day. So men this this the 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 proliferation of side chicks and it becoming very popular in our society today because one of the reasons I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say primarily is insecurity in the relationship. Insecurity. And and some of the men have the side chick as backup. And you you know that like the notion of side chick is nothing that is new today. What we call what mistresses, right? You have a mistress. So the insecurity in your relationship can actually push the man to having another person as backup when they're not really sure where that relationship is heading to. Another one is ego, ego, the ego, 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 the ego of the man needing to have other women who want to be with them in order to keep their selfish team boosted. The other one, you know, um, lack of intimacy is always the number of some of the reasons that's a strong reason why men lack of intimacy sexual intimacy in the relationship 
and the other one is that men have sexual because they want they want to they can period and um me Mejin Gandhi said that because everybody else is doing it i do i will differ with that not every man keeps a side chick not at all not every man keeps a side chick so back to the question that you asked why do i lay the blame on the other woman um like i said i, I explained it earlier that i was looking at it from the angle that you know you just said it that there is no if if the if the if there's no other woman willing to be number two then there can be no number two so if you the other woman that is a side chick if you refuse to play along and you deny i'm going to give an example you know years ago i was working in this um company i'm not going to call the name because if i call the name some of you might know the person that owns the company and this guy he was he was hitting on me right it didn't work out and then the next thing is that i went to an apartment to pick up pick up a girlfriend of mine and i saw him there with some other chicks and i came the next day in the office and i was asking him that what is his problem must you have a girlfriend he said yes i must have a girlfriend i must he cannot just stay without having a side chick it's like and so it's it's common practice for him there's no he cannot see himself then one day this very beautiful woman walked in, in into the office and introduced herself and that was his wife Be when i talk about beautiful eh mami wata see i was i froze i literally froze i looked at this woman and i was like what is this man looking for look at your wife and I actually had to confront him because I'm not one of those people that, you know, I, I will, I don't play those games. So he came and I asked him, I said, look at your wife. She's this status in a society. She's like this. What are you looking for? What is your problem? He just simply told me that he's happy in his home. He's taking care of his family. Everything is good, but he still needs a side chick. And I think it was an issue of ego because they're available if you don't make yourself available there's not going to be a side chick so my message is not that i'm really i'm not really blaming the other woman because trust me the blame goes to the man rather than the woman i will blame the husband or the married man that is in a in in in, in a committed relationship that goes out there and has and, and you have a side chick right i'm not i'm not really going to blame the side chick i'm not blaming the side chick there's a part the reason i'm just passing the message that we need to rise up as women if you're as a woman that is playing that side chick role you have told the man that you're willing to you don't require loyalty from him you don't require respect and because of that you have another woman in the house that is missing the attention of her husband, probably not playing the role in taking care of his children, not taking his children out for games and being there for them. It's aching and it's hurting. That's the reason why some women cry emotionally. It's really, it, it, it breaks somebody down. A lot of women have suffered from brain aneurysm, from stress and all of that, just because of the man that, you know, you decide to play that role as a side chick. I'm not totally just throwing the blame on the, on the on the other woman. The man has a major and major part to play when Dr. it comes Fonchio, to that. Uh, yes. Dr. Fonchio, you mentioned um, um, lack of sex or inadequate sex. Um, it, do you find that as a flimsy excuse for the man who chooses to go for a side chick or it is a valid reason? I'm going to be asking Mejong Gante the same question. I don't I don't think it's a valid reason. There should not there shouldn't be any reason at all that you break your marriage vows. Um I I see men that make up for that. The men that make up for that. Let me say this. A lot a lot of relationships start having issues when the woman has a child. And there's a reason. 
Have we ever sat down to really break down and look at the reason why women's libido and the sexual drive suddenly goes down after they have babies? Has anybody ever researched that? No. Women's sexual drive and the libido goes down after they have babies. And that's the, re and that's the, the, the high period where men actually attempted to go out there and cheat. I know men that make up for that. You make up for that. The men that will must, we're, we're 18 plus here, right? I hope they're not children. There are men that will masturbate just to cover up for that because he does not want to break the vow and the, and, and the commitment that he has made in, in his home. There, there's a way around that. You need to sit down and communicate and tell your, your wife this is the problem. You know, you cannot just jump out there the minute you don't have enough sex in your house. You jump out there to go uh, 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 um, find another uh, another person so that you can you can make th that's why I say that there's a, a issue with with the ego you know the man's ego has some has something to do with that because there are ways around that there's a way around that because at the end of the day what do you want to do you want to ejaculate period so as that's it true so you're just going to go find a side chick for five seconds in two seconds. Let me tell you, you have a wife in the house that gives you 80% of what you want. And then you're going out there to go get a 20% of what you're not getting. So you're ready to jeopardize your 80% and your family to get 20%. Does that make sense? It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Um, at this point, I'm going to be um, asking uh, Major Ngante. Uh, by the way, do I pronounce your first name correct? How do I get it? Oh, that is, you got it. Dieshe Gante. It's, that's one of the versions, though. There are several versions, and all of them are correct. Thank you, but, uh, sir. But you, you, are you, you have heard right what uh, Dr. Mrs. Veronica has said. Do you disagree with her, if yes, to what extent? So, first of all, let, let, let me join her. And the literature is pretty clear on, on uh, the reasons or the, uh, the impacts of, of, uh, side checking and the reasons the primary reason as dr fortune just said it's clear it's, it's uh, insecurity and self-esteem that is the most common reasoning point now i want to add this that if we're discussing this today it's just because we want to bring light on how we can then try to impact it in one way or the other um Identifying, and by the way, so just so let me correct one other thing too, or uh, just make sure I was not on misunderstood. There was an article written by Sila, uh, the name is Sila, Silas Nyamweza from Kenya uh, in the Standard. It's a, it's, it's, you wrote that in 2019. That's some of the reasons they actually did a, a survey and found out that some men just do it. They actually interviewed somebody whose reason was because hey, if I don't do this, uh, everybody does it, so they will laugh at me. It's, again, that's cultural. Now, let me go back to your question. The reason, the, the, the whole aspect of side chicken, whether it's, uh, you know, I, 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 don't, I just, I don't want to, I don't know how to put this, but the blame, the word blame might take us of course, a little bit. So, but we got to understand it in some way. There, the idea of side chicks or concubinage is lodged very firmly in the issue of uh, marital infidelity, right? That's what we talk about. So, marital infidelity goes both ways. Now, the side chick aspect of it, if you look at the numbers and studies, there are plenty of studies and surveys that indicate some the level of activity, like in the United States, most of the activity happens with younger women and older men. And some of the surveys from those from, from this community indicate that younger women are less experienced. Okay? They want certain things that they, they think it's more important in life than the older men. And then the older men are in, in, conversely want certain things that is also associated with some issues that they have as individuals and unable to rectify them as individuals. And they are mostly 
for issues of self-esteem, confidence, and insecurity. Okay, so, um, Major, we have uh, the first call on the line, and that is uh, Mrs. Ruth Yeboa. Hello, Mrs. Yeboa. Welcome on board Chat Night Africa, Voices of Africa Chat Night. What's your question or what's your contribution? First, do you uh, think it's a reality that um, the side chicks market is in, uh, in a boom? Well, I must say that I'm not <laughs> too familiar with all of what's going on with side chicks, but like the doctor said, um, it's the whole idea of infidelity. Now I can speak on that because I don't follow the trends, so I'm not sure um, how all of that is going. But in terms of infidelity, that's a huge issue in marriage. I want to make sure that Mr. Jungante is hearing you. That's great. I all right, go ahead, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, so. The issue of infidelity is a huge issue um, cross-culturally. So it's not just an African thing and it's also not an American thing. Um, yes, back in the day, and I think that even now, you know, survey will show that the majority of um, men step outside of their marriage. I, I believe that's what we're talking about. Um, but there are also women who do step outside and do so. Now, men cheat because they can. Right. And that's that's a fact, because there's always a woman on the side who feels like, you know, there's something you've got that I, I deserve. And it's the concept of um, uh, a lack of self-esteem, because you really have to have a low self-esteem to think that um, you would rather be second, you know. And if you haven't been married, then it's easy to think that oh, well, you know, I can prove and I can overdo that woman and get her husband and vice versa, right? Because I've seen it the other way where the the the, the men, you know, has gone uh, for a married woman. And so the other way is the same as well. In fact, there was a recent story of a young man who killed himself on the highway. I don't want to say the state because it will give it away, but um, killed himself on the highway because the woman who stepped outside of the marriage um, decided to go back to her husband. And that really got her um, shocked and uh, got him upset and he went and killed himself. So what people don't realize is that infidelity is such a traumatic experience. And it's so big that when you're dealing with that person, you step out because my, you know, I'm not happy at home. You're not giving me this. You're not giving me that. You complain about all these things and go get somebody and don't know the mental health of that person and don't know the capacity of that person, not knowing that I'm exposing my entire family to people that can come and hurt my family. And so it's a selfish endeavor, right, of the woman or the men stepping out, not thinking about what is the end result only focusing on their pleasure, you know, but pleasure is temporary. It's temporary. So it's flourishing, I guess, you know, for lack of better words, um, it's flourishing because it can flourish. And there are people who don't think that they deserve better or more. So they're willing to tag alongside somebody else's possession, you know. Mrs. Um, Mrs. Yeah, boy, I'm going to ask you a question. If you ask the men who leave their wives at home and going after side chicks, they give you reasons that sound very plausible. Why are those men wrong? Rephrase your question. When Please. you talk to men who leave their wives at home and looking, running behind side chicks, mm -hmm. they give you reasons that sound plausible, strong reasons. Why are those men wrong? You know, you see things circulating um, on Facebook and other social media platforms. And I believe, especially in the African culture, there's a tendency to say, because you did this and this and that, that's why. You know, you're a woman, your mouth is too spicy and you are a man and you're not good enough or you don't have this. And you see, there is no excuse for infidelity. Okay. Your spouse is not responsible for your actions. Every action you choose to undertake is your responsibility. So you cheating and saying I didn't get sex is really just 
a, a meager mindset, right? A really low mindset because sex is not an excuse why you should go for more. You cheating and saying I didn't get food is really, it's a low functioning mindset again. <laughs> so you understand because you're not a baby, right? You can find yourself something to eat. Assuming you are single, you will eat. Um, and so there's no reason. So if you're asking that question, there's a tendency of always adding things like, this is why. So it's like adding insult to injury. Not only have you injured and traumatized the woman or the man that has been cheated on, now you're tell- telling the person, well, you know, it's your fault. If you did X, Y, and Z, the person wouldn't have done this. Mrs. Yeboa, that is not I how a question. it happens. My last question mm-hmm. for you, Mrs. Yeboa, is when these men who cheat find reasons... Could there be ways which the woman in the house, the housewife, the married woman, w- can put put the market, the, the side chicks market, they out of business through the way that she behaves also at home? No, the only person that can put the side chick business uh, out of business or whatever is the person that's looking for the side chick. Don't you think? <laughs> no. You know? Well, because I'm, I'm going to ask Mrs. Dr. Mrs. I, I mean, I, I, I'm just Dr. saying. Mejongante. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Are you still there? It looks like she, she's dropped off the no, line. No, I'm here. Oh, okay. I'm here. Okay. So what's your concluding remark? So my concluding remark is, okay, as a society, if we're going to move away from the whole concept of infidelity and really work to fix homes and families and build and strengthen families, we have to move away from blame and shame, right? And get to the bottom line, right? When you get to the bottom line, then you can teach and educate people on what they're doing and also explain why resorting to something else isn't the solution. Now, let me add this little piece. Okay. A contributing factor is not a cause. So a woman always saying, or a man saying, oh, I I'm not ready for sex. I don't want to do this. I don't, it's, it's a contributing factor. It's not a cause of infidelity. And we make that mistake and associate it directly. It's not a direct correlation. Therefore, we have to move away from adding insult to injury. And that's the only way the psychic method will be done because we won't give them a reason to persist. Well, i am ended. Uh, th- thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ruth Yeboa. I'm going to uh, now uh, uh, let uh, uh, Mejongante respond to you. That was uh, Mrs. Uh, Ruth uh, Yeboah. She's been here several times. She's a marriage counselor. Thank you, Ruth. Give it hooray! Give it hooray! Give it hooray! She said quite a lot, Major. Yeah, I, I want to join you before to your uh, Ms. Ruth Yeboah. I remember I was I, I did listen to her one of her sessions. And she said very, I mean, the significant thing she put it out there. And I really appreciate what she said. Now, let's just, let, let me make sure I understand what, what we're trying to do here. Okay. The issue of concubinage or side chick, okay, it's existed in time immemorial. We know that, right? And we, the, the premise of our discussion is that there is a flourishing of it. Seems like there is an increase of it. And that's what I, that's where I was like, I don't have anything to support that. But let's say we're trying to help our little, in our little way, to reduce the effects of these activity, which we consider to be derogatory to family life. So let's, so let me make sure I understand that's what we're trying to get to. With that said, Again, my uh, learned colleague, their friend, uh, Dr. Santos, mentioned something which is very clear. The culture, right? The context to which we are talking these things, we got to understand it very clearly and make sure we are not um, uh, generalizing it so much so that we cannot even take any practical steps. The, that's why I mentioned what I started talking. I mentioned a few uh, environments. I started with Philippines what they do there, what is happening in Kenya, what's acceptable. Cameroon has it, Ghana has it, United States has their own way. So if we redefine all what, if we redefine what we talked about here, the, the side chick issue, we have a kind of like almost agree that it is not a good thing. And we kind of agree that insecurity and self-esteem is one of the 
main thing, the main reason that happens, and we are almost, I think we are almost, there is no argument that we cannot stop it, but we can do something to reduce the effect. So when we talk about taking responsibility, every individual that participates in it has to take responsibility. Now, in our, if we want to be kind of like adults in this field and look at it, we will see that the reasons why different people participate, then we can be able to affect it. When we look at the reason why young women participate in it, then you will understand that we can do something different. The reason most young women participate in side chicks for older men, the, the, the literature, the social commentary is pretty pretty deep. It's plenty of it. All indicates that most of them have some allure, some sexual escapades that give them some kind of interest. And they don't always say no baggage. You're having a relationship with no baggage. But with time, they all want to become dementia. So as they mature and grow, they learn how to want more. You wanted the guy just for financial support and then something added. Then you realize he's nice. Oh, now you want him to be there. You want him to answer your call at 3 a.m. You want him to do more. And then you start to find your way to unseat the site and main chick and become the main chick. Ruth, and that's why I want us to look at it. Boa, Ruth Yeboah said, all those reasons men throw out there to justify the actions are contributing fact, uh, factors, not the cause. And, and which I which I do agree that those are those contributing factors, but to the to the extent that somebody has studied this and said this is a cause, I don't know. But to to say there is there is elaborate literature that indicates that every infidelity is an aspect of self. Well, I'm talking about in the context of the United States. Now we talk about the context of the United States. In its context, infidelity is all associated to self-confidence, insecurity, and all that stuff. So that's why I say we got to identify what we talk about so we can, before we can look at any mitigating ways, we got to understand it. Now, if you go to Cameroon or to Africa, in most African cultures, in some areas, again, I'm not generalizing too much, but in some areas, I'm telling you, it is in their culture, in some villages, they, a man has a wife, okay, legally, for instance, they legally get married, and in some, most of these com communities, they are unable to have, to marry more than one wife, so they legally get married to one, and some of them get married in our churches, so they are already constrained by church's law, but they all still participate in both with the knowledge of the first wife or the main wife. They participate in this concubinage or side chick thing. And they kind of, it's those societies, they accept them to a different level. So it's not, I mean, again, so when we talk about it, let's define it in the context of each society before we can start to say, okay, this is how we ameliorate it. In the United States, this is our preserve. This is what we talk about. United States, let's just say the West, in the West, it's kind of like, so we may look at it in the context of ways to talk about. Major Gante, before I bring on to the platform, Dr. Mrs. Veronica Fortu, I have a text here. Somebody just texted me, um, 240-603-7367. That's my text, number 240-603-7367. Here's what the gentleman says. You guys are blaming men who go for blaming us men who go for side chicks because you are you are fit, you are you are fit and not in our shoes. The question he asked me to ask you, Mejunganta, is what do you expect him to do when he returns home from work every day and the house looks more like a shark tank? So there is a lot of premise. The presumption there in that question is that there is, she is married to a woman and the woman's primary function or job is to not make the house a shark tank. So that's the premise, right? That's the thing he's saying. Now, if that was the expectation and the communication in your relationship, right? If that was what you agreed with, agreed and agreed to establish a relationship based like that, 
then it's all an issue of communicating. So you must have failed to indicate or hold the partner, or maybe you did something that the person thinks you don't deserve, or you fail in the contract in some way, they don't, the person doesn't deserve that you can, he or, or she can live up to that contract. But again, I would personally, I would say it's, uh, there is an issue about communicating what the problem was and how to solve it. If, the, if you come back and the home and it's a shark tank, and you were expecting a clean house, communicate it, figure out why. And if that persists, then you might have got into a relationship or a contract incorrectly. And that doesn't give you the permission to have a side check. There is a different way to approach a problem. If the relationship is not worth keeping, then there are ways to terminate it or work on it if you want to work on it. But it, I don't see how that's an excuse. Get a side check. Major Dershi Gante. Thank you, sir. And you are watching Voices of Africa at Chat Night. Woman, sister, don't be the reason why that woman is crying in her home. Why is the side chicks market booming? That's what's in our focus on the show this week. My name is Sir Divine Chua Mukong. I'm anchoring this broadcast from Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. This broadcast is being aired live now on our website, www.chatnightafrica.net. Now, Mrs. Fortune, once more on the platform. Mrs. Uh, Dr. Mrs. Fortu. Yes, sir. You have heard all the reasons why men leave their wives at home <laughs> and they're running after other women out of, in other words, extramarital affairs. What is keeping these, we, th these men out there? It, 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 everybody abhors it. Uh, it's, nobody, nobody's coming to say, hey, yeah, that's a great <laughs> thing to do. But it keeps going on. There has to be something that's getting the men hooked out there. <laughs> is it that these side chicks are doing what madam is unable or not, unwilling to do at home? <laughs> not at all. Not at all. And and let me let me let me start by um taking us back to 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 really to the foundation. Let's um Mejin Gante was talking, let's really define uh, a side chick is different from a concubine. Yes, because in African culture, concubine is, is acceptable. When you have a concubine, your wife in the house knows, family knows, and everybody knows it is acceptable. A side chick is a mistress. And who is that woman? Is, a, is, is, is somebody that you're dating in addition to your wife in secret? That's a side chick. You're dating that person or you're having an affair with the person in secret. And affairs don't suddenly happen. To say that, the, the, like I said, the, the side chick, this is what research shows. The side chick is only giving you 20%. You're only going to get 20% of what your wife is giving. So you're getting 80% in your home and you're going to go get 20%. So to say that you're not getting what the wife is giving you and you're going to, to, a, to a side chick, now you're not just going to go, like I said, they will say in Pigeon now, you need to just go thief. You're not just going to go sneak around and have a few minutes of, of pleasure. You're actually getting yourself involved now in another relationship. Now it's becoming a relationship. Because for you to be able to judge this and, 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 and compare that what you, your, your wife is not giving you, you're getting from a side chick, you, you need to be able to fully engage in that relationship for you to be able to compare and contrast. You cannot be having a weekend and a white night stand and a few hours with somebody and you only compare that with somebody that you're, you're spending your, your, or how many years with. You need to be able to get into a relationship with side chick. When the side chick gets in the position where she's now the wife, 
you now you will know how to compare the two of them. You cannot just compare some somebody you're going to go see overnight and then you come back and you're telling me that you're getting uh, uh, what your wife is not getting, not giving you from them in hours, in a day or two. It, it simply doesn't make any sense. There should be no reason, like uh, Mejun Ganti said, if the relationship is not working and you cannot repair the relationship, there's a way of terminating it. You can terminate the relationship and then go we'll get yourself involved. We need to stop this attitude of getting, the, our, our community is getting so uh, 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 um, delicate. How, how can I put it? We, we need to actually work together with the men. This culture of saying that even in the African community, it's cultural for the man to have a side chick. No, because society has accepted it, because we have accepted it. The, that's the reason why we're having this conversation, because we need to do something about it. It is destroying families, it's destroying your children's future, it's destroying even you, it's destroying the, the community and the society. So what do we do about it? We need to stop this culture. Just because you grew up in a community where your father was doing that, and then now you, you want to continue that same culture and say that it's cultural, is it right? It is not right. Is it right? I'm going to ask, is, is it right? Just because you think that it's it's something that everybody else has been doing. Is it right? Have you really sat down and, and thought about how this affects your family? How this affects the future? The side chick that you're saying, is this person? There's a question. Men should be asking themselves this question. Is this, is this person going to be with you if you you become terminally ill? Is this girl going to stand by you? Because here is the problem. Many of you men run out there and get the side chicks just because you're, I hear somebody complain about what? The, the, the home? Isn't that something you can sit down and talk about? Is it a good enough reason for you to run out there and go have a side chick because you came home from work and, and, your, and your home is whatever? Let me ask you a question. If you fall and you get sick, and you're in, in, in a terminal situation, you're bed reading. Is that side chick going to take care of you? Because I see so many instances where the man always goes back to the wife after the side chick has, she's soaked you dry, run down your finances, run down your businesses. Then now you're running back to the same uh, wife or main chick that you abandoned for the side chick for her to pick the crumbs and mend it, right? It's not correct. Just because you 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 see your 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 fathers and your forefathers having it. it 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 doesn't mean that it's right i can tell you that a lot of our mothers and our grandmothers went through a lot of emotional distress if you think about it mrs veronica you, we have uh, somebody on the line this is voices of africa at chat night hello there hi uh greetings to you all dr veronica Fortu. How are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. Good. I just wanted to say a few things. Uh, the fact, these are just facts which I know. You know, it's, it's what it's, it's about, this chai chai chick thing. We're asking ourselves what, what makes women so damn appealing to men who already have girlfriends, you know, say, was or was still a wife and kids of their own. You see, the fact is that uh, the, the side chick issue is not it's not something that is unknown more in relationships. You know that. And you know, and it, it, it's a fact also that uh, relationship of previous eras, for that for that matter, you know, you look at a woman, she's the mistress, you know, like the side chick is like the mistress, and the other woman, the other one who never comes home. So the, 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 the hidden one that no one knows, the force behind the, the, the scenes, that the man cannot resist. So you see, the side chick is the is the babe over over everything, and the man is drawn to the side chick due to the to the fact that the belief that the woman gives a peace of mind, and uh, worst of all, I mean, uh, as as far as as far as some men can hardly say no to the chance to put in less commitment. So you know, I'm not saying that uh, having a side chick is a great idea, but the fact is that. Uh, you know, the fact is that uh, commitment that normal people normally they see it as a way to escape from stress and pressure that their woman mounts for them at home. 
you know, and, you know, they, they also have the ability to enjoy, you know, good sex and they get more sex. And these are offers too, these offers are really too juicy. Are you judging for having having uh, enough sex or more sex in, in two nights? Is that what you're talking well, about? <laughs> Or, or, or uh, that you the, the 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 side chick is relieving your stress in a couple of hours is that what you're talking about what makes you think that when the side chick becomes a main chick she's not going to give you stress I'm do you know that you don't know anybody until you start living with them I, it's very easy for you to keep a side chick for so many years because there's no commitment but once you're committed to that person it becomes a whole different ball it's it's a whole game Okay, so Dr. Dr. Mrs. Veronica is going to. Uh, th th this is this is great crossfire now on chat so night. Egoistic, it's so selfish, it's so destructive right, that you're but, judging your enjoyment with somebody based on hours. That is so like seriously. Like men should really look at themselves and feel ashamed. They should be responsible. That you're telling me that you're enjoying good sex with a woman you get in two days. And Remember the other what, woman you are with them uh, for for how many okay. days or how many yeah, years yeah, or how she, many yeah, months? Uh, Dr. Fortu, Dr. Fortu, yes, uh, our caller is still on the line. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm saying that this are fact. It doesn't apply to me. No, 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 absolutely. This is this is an intellectual discussion. This is an, it doesn't necessarily mean that's what you are doing or that reflects I, your point of view, yes. Yes, I like the way you are, are directing my opinion. But the truth is, the fact is that in general, the main chick Right, rightly so, put certain expectations on her man. And a side chick does not have to expect anything except trips and sex. Trips and sex. You go on trips, holiday trips, come back, have sex. And once you have that consistency, the man is able to, to provide for that. Then you'll be a permanent side chick that offers that pleasure, which the husband is not supposed to do regularly. So you see where I'm telling you, this is the fact, this is a hard fact. Right, she, she, she will respond to you, just just make your point. Uh, Dr. Mrs. Veronica will respond to you when you get off the uh, line, yes. Um, do you have any concluding okay, remark or a question for her? Yeah, the last point, I mean, she's a great speaker, motivational speaker. I'm glad that I'm bringing out this fact so that she can, you know, clarify them. In Absolutely. Very, in a very educated way so that people will not take my facts to be advised. You know, I'm not advising men to do it. I'm just saying that these things happen for real. So I'm throwing it out there so that she can counteract it and put some advice on in the brains of men who do these things because these things exist. So that's all I can say. Thank you very much for your uh, for your opportunity to let me talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, you, Dr. Mrs. Veronica so Fortune, much. I'm going to bring uh, Medjongante to come on uh, shortly to uh, respond to this. This is, when I schooled in the University of Yaoundé, um, Advanced School of Mass Communication, um, back around um, the late 80s, I mean, the neighborhoods were very muddy, muddy. But you saw all these big shots in Yaoundé, Cameroon, who drove big Mercedes cars, walked in the mud, dirty roads, get into the neighborhood to spend nights with side chicks, young ladies in the university. So the question I ask you is, what is attracting them there? There has to be something. This is not to justify it. And, and, and the reason why I, I thought this would be important for us to talk about on Voices of Africa, Voices uh, of Africa chat night is because it, to fix the table, it, you have to recognize it's broken before you can even fix it. So what is it that attracts the, and, and back then they used to call them Mboma. Yeah, it's I don't sex. know if you've heard if you if, if, if some really call them it, sugar daddies and so on. There's what there's no other answer to it than sex. That's it. The bottom line is that they're looking for sex. Period. Because what is it that they do? You cannot take her out to a nightclub. You can't take her out to, to, to anywhere. Some of them have, they, they go all the way in taking them to vacations in other country. But exactly, greed, selfishness and greed. And sex is the center when you see a grown-up man like that 
packing his big pajero and walking inside mud. We, we had a whole lot of that happening back in, in the university where they would catch this man red-handed. He would jump outside the window, running naked from a, 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 a university student's bedroom and, and the boyfriend shows up. What, what were you looking for? At the end of the day, he went to look for sex. Uh, like uh, uh, the other speaker said, these girls are younger. You, you think that they're giving you different the different kind of sex than your wife is giving you. It, it simply doesn't make any sense. What this um, uh, other speaker, the, uh, the uh, person you just said, um, I forgot his name, I'm so sorry. That's okay. He's making a valid point that uh, because these women make themselves available for this man, I have been in a situation where I could have, but I decided not to play a side chick. I said I would not be a side chick. The reason why for this topic is that, remember what we're saying, don't be the reason why another woman is crying. Don't be that reason why another woman is lamenting in her home. Even though the blame doesn't go to the side chick, but the, the issue, we're looking for a solution here. And how are we going to combat this pandemic that is going on in our community? Men have gotten to the point where they think that it's a natural phenomenon, it's a natural thing. They just do it because they can. No consequences and nobody holding, holding them responsible for what they do. You can just go out there and have and sneakily have a mistress until something happens, until she gets pregnant or until they give you a disease, until you get yourself involved in issues. And then you're, you're looking for the main chick to solve it for you. Right. So. If you're not getting enough sex in your home, talk to your wife, have a conversation. How can this happen? And if you think that that is a problem to you, that you're not really getting it, terminate the relationship if that's enough for you, that you're going to divorce your, your, your wife because you're not getting enough sex and you want to go get it out there. There are consequences. These things are not for free. Here's the thing. You're making an, another woman cry. You, the side chick, you're making another woman cry. Why? You're, you're benefiting, you're reaping from what she's sowing. Because all she does is sit there and wait for the man to come and give him good sex and collect the gifts. He comes in and collect good sex and, and collect the gifts. He's paying your house rent. He's taking care of you. This is money and income and the time that he should be spending on his family and preparing for retirement and preparing for his children's future. But he's with you and he has no future with you. Hello? Once he thinks that he's relaxed, he comes home and then he starts to treat his wife like garbage just because of where he's coming from and he's only getting that from you in a couple of hours you think about it this woman is with this man seven days a week 24 hours and taking all the bullshit from him and then when he cannot take a little bullshit from the wife he runs to you so that he can what like a rebound you're the reason why the woman is crying so if you take yourself out of the picture he has no choice you can choose to say no we can choose to say, I don't want to play the part of the side chick. We can fix our community. The change we want to see surely has to begin with us. Like I said, I've been in a position where I could have been a side chick. And I say, no, I choose not to be a side chick. I educated the man. And I say, what you need to do is go back and fix your relationship with your wife. And trust me to today, they're still married. Uh, Major Lanter, um, uh, and, and Ver uh, Dr. Veronica, um, thought you hold it there. Mitchell Hunter, I just got a text here. Somebody is sending me uh, a scenario. You are a man. You coming back from work. You have a side chick. By the time you step out of your car, the side chick welcomes you. She's like falling on the ground, take <laughs> you back home to the house, brings you warm water to wash your hands, serves you dinner. You eat the food. You go to your, home, your own house. Your own wife is saying, Mary, 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 have you put food for your daddy? On the table now these are two scenarios radically opposite tell me as a human being how are you going to feel towards towards one your side chick number two your wife now you plural i'm not saying major Gante, you per se because i know you're happily married oh thank you absolutely i am but um I'll, let me place myself in that situation and see what under what uh what combination of Effects, right? 
come to any understanding of, of the reason for that. Again, my, my conclusion, or what, I'm, what I want to re-emphasize is that uh, if you see, if anybody who participates in extramarital affair understands the survey, by the way, the survey in the United States indicate that 93% of everybody who was surveyed out of 20,000 people surveyed accept that it is wrong to do it. So 60% of men understand and say in the survey that it is wrong to do it. 70% of women say it is wrong to do it. So they, everybody knows it's wrong. Okay, that's, let's make sure that's clear. Now, why are you doing something you know is wrong? Because they know it's wrong. They know it. Okay, you know it's wrong. Now, you go and you're asking for something, uh, somebody to stroke your ego or make sure you get warm water. And why? What the question is why? Why is, if that's what you want from your wife, she ever asked why you're not getting it from your wife? If that's if that's what you want, would you ever communicate that? Say, <laughs> why, Doctor Fortu, Doctor Fortu, I wanted to react to the scenario just uh, texted me. Um, this man has a side chick; is married, obviously. Uh, he's coming back from work, stops by the uh, side chick's home, and this woman is falling, rolling in front of him. You know, you know, kissing his feet takes the hand back into the house. Hello, daddy, honey, how was work today? Comes back home, it is hell. Mary, Mary, when I don't put you up for papa, uh, Dr. Veronica Fortu, humanly speaking, where do you expect this man's emotion to go? <laughs> and doesn't question, part B of my question is, doesn't the woman in the house take some responsibility? <laughs> the man's emotions he's made a commitment and his obligation is for his home mm? the side chick treating that man like that is a setup they are very good at doing that trust me what makes you think that when she if you replace her with your wife she's gonna come and she'll continue to daddy 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 and sugar 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 you i used to be in a position where i'll be say blaming the woman in the house for not doing enough let me tell you a man that has the, the the tendency to go out and cheat it doesn't matter what you do to him he will still go and cheat i told you about this guy he has everything that he wants his wife respects him his wife adores him his wife worships him his wife does all the things he does but just because he has that money and that ability to be able to roam around with different different girls he told me he cannot live without a side chick. It doesn't matter what he's getting from his wife. He can simply just live without them. Oh yeah? So, but, but humanly speaking, you would definitely want to be in an environment that is cozy, an environment where you are, you are treated nicely, an environment where, um, in that environment where the side chick is presenting to you, understand humanly speaking everybody wants a home that is clean is nice is welcoming the wife will serve food for you and all of that but then there are there, there's simply other circumstances why do you think that the, the your wife will be telling the, the daughter to serve their father maybe there was something else going on but you're right to say that if you have those two scenarios you're definitely going to pick what the side chick is giving you because that's what everybody wants comfort they want to be cajoled the man wants to be treated like a king he wants to be treated you know with respect he wants to be treated um you know like like a baby the man wants to be pampered men want to be pampered but trust me i have come to learn that there's some men you can give them heaven and earth you can give them gold they're still going to go out there they're still going to have, you know, secret relationships in the background. They're still going to cheat. They're still going to keep side chicks. So I still go back to the fact that I see Sister uh, Mercy. 
we always differ on 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 this point when it comes to the side chick and the main chick they want the women in the house to keep their men to hold their men responsible for the man going out to go and cheat my question is that if there's no other person out there willing to accept the man to come and cheat with them there'll be no person for the man to cheat with in the first place Yes, the buyer so the because side the is making themselves available. That's why the <laughs> men are going to go cheat with them. The man isn't cheating with you because he likes you, it's because you're making yourself available. We will be right back for the second segment of this broadcast. This is Chat Night Africa. My name is Sir Divine Chamakong, and I'm anchoring this broadcast from Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. This broadcast is being aired live now on www.chatnightafrica.net. Please, we urge you to also go to Chat Night Africa, our YouTube channel, and uh, subscribe. We have a little, a little, a little um, interlude of uh, music before we continue in the discussion. Stay tuned. <laughs> Chat Night Africa also promotes the culture of Africans, uh, but not for Africans only. I got this recording during my trip to Yaoundé, Cameroon. I hope you did like it. We will now um, gravitate towards discussing the impact of, remember that this is a special broadcast because today is Father's Day. And we're looking at fathers as being those leaving their homes to go for side chicks, not uh, Madame leaving the home to go for side guys, if I may so call that. And uh, so uh, I'm going to invite um, uh, Dr. Fortu, but before she comes in, here is uh, Major Ndiashi Ngante once more on the platform. Thank you, uh, studio audience. Again, um, in case you're just joining this broadcast, the guy um, on the platform with me is a senior military officer in the United States military. That's uh, Major Ndeshi Ngante. He's been there for 20 years. So I want to sincerely thank you once more for your services to the country. You sacrifice a lot. Sometimes you have to make the ultimate sacrifice. I thank you, sir. Thank you very much. We all do it together. Thankfully, uh, I am uh, doing other things now after having served uh, uh, more than 20. So I'm happily uh, serving as part of the retired corps. Oh. <laughs> and uh, but, uh, thank and, and I want to say, I, I want to thank all of those. I, I mean, Mercy um, Nabi Foje is writing a lot of notes and this fierce debate in the green room. You can go there and uh, even after the show, you can debate each other. That's the spirit at Chat Night Africa. Some of the positions I take here are not those that reflect my personal opinion. I am the moderator. And so there are times I'm going to take the, what they call the devil's advocate. Um, you are a man. Um, what, as a leader of the house, what's likely going to be the impact of keeping side chicks? And here's why I ask you this question. Most oftentimes, people, men go out because they're going to look for some comfort, pleasure, whatever they call it, or whatever reasons they advance. But m often, they are not cognizant of the impact that's creating at home. Tell me, you are daddy, you are husband. What are some of the effects that having side chicks, having women, dating women out of your home are likely to bring upon your family? Uh, doctor, thank you very much for the question. Uh, Dr. And Mrs. Fortune did mention several reasons, uh, some of the impacts. 
on uh, the family by not being present physically, intellectually, and emotionally. Oh, well, of course, financially too, materially too. Everything, everything, if I put it in simple terms, everything that you give outside is not available for inside. If we say you're giving money, it doesn't matter if you have excess of it. If you're giving assistance, financial assistance, a side check, then that financial assistance is not available for your family. That's just an ex a simple example, but a more complex or more uh, the one that has the most ramification is the emotional and intellectual unavailability. Every time you there is a need, if you're going outside to go to satisfy a need, it's because there was a gap in the home. Now, there is a lot of social commentary indicating that children who grow from environments that tolerate side checks, they grow with less respect for females. Let's talk about males. Males, they grow with less respect for females. If they had grown in a family that they have seen their parents or their dad kind of do, because you may think you're hiding stuff, but people do know things and your behavior does indicate. So it does affect them in very, very great terms, great terms, the psychological growth, social growth, and the self-esteem as well. So again, if you just take the material part, the financial part as a deficit that you're creating, just think about it, the emotional, intellectual, and uh, physical presence that it's not there, it's also a deficit in family. We can look, there's a lot of literature on the psychological impact of it, but broadly, every time you give something outside your sanctimonious home, then you are taking it away from them. I'm going to ask you a personal question, so if you permit me. I know your wife, Dr. Colette Ngante. What, what is she doing at home that just makes this business of side chick sound like Chinese language that you don't understand, you don't want to understand? Well, are there things that she's doing at home that, that makes you say, hey, look, no, it's not even worth it? it first thing is that, I, let me, again, let me make sure this is clear. I don't think my wife, I would give a moment to any other female uh, at the risk of my wife. It will not happen. She is everything. She's, she's beautiful. She's intelligent. She's emotionally present. She's intellectually very stimulating. We can have a very good space. And that's, that's just one part of it. The more, the more practical part is me. It is me. It is what I think about myself, how I value myself. If I think I will get value from a side check, it's because I understand I am in need of something that I cannot self-generate. When I say self-generate, that means my home, my wife, and everybody can generate. And it all comes back to a filled understanding of my own self. So I want to make sure that's clear. It's always about the individual. I just shared an article there from uh, uh, from Nicole, and if you read it, and and most of the information that is existing in 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 our social literature now indicates that if we want to get the assumption is that the side check is a magnet. It's what is creating it. That's the assumption, and all these uh, there. I mean, there is even talk show about it. And all what they do is they go at, they go after the side chicks. Okay, yeah, I agree. That's a one way to look at it. But the more important thing for me as a participant in this space is that I can only talk about what I do, what how I see myself, self worth. If I'm worth it, if I feel like I'm worth a responsible, respectable relationship then I'll keep it. But if I feel like I'm not worth one, then I'll go look for a side chick. Here is uh, somebody, uh, she prefers to be anonymous. That's fine, I'll keep you anonymity. Anonymity. Um, she knows you, She's that's one of your friends on Facebook. She is asking whether deciding to go very public 
in social media with your wife is some way to chase away the hawks who could come hitting at you. And I'm going to ask the same question to Dr. Veronica Fortune. Oh, I absolutely not. I, uh, so I live a very transparent life. My wife and I, we live a very transparent life. And there is nothing, there's nothing that you will do to me that will then change my calibration, the way I see my worth. I value myself in a certain way that there's nothing that you will do to change me, change my value. You're not going to add value to myself. Doesn't matter how beautiful, pretty, or whatever you think you, whatever you think you have, you will not add value to me. So I'm not going to be interested in you because you're not going to add any value to me. And that's for that reason I live a very transparent life. You can, I don't. My wife and I, we are in. I don't, you can come, you could do whatever, but it's not going to change me because I have a particular way out of which I look at myself and the way I value myself. And you cannot add value to it. Thank you, Major Ndishian Gante. I will be bringing on uh, <laughs> Dr. Mrs. Veronica Fortune at uh, this point. You are watching Voices of Africa at Chat Night. My name is uh, Divine Chabacon. Thank you so much, studio audience. Mrs. Uh, Veronica Fortune, I'm going to ask you the same personal question. Um, you, and I know your husband, I happen to know your husband, you are a very tight-knit couple, watertight. Uh, are there things that you do that keep Valerie from looking at somebody in a miniskirt in the street while you guys are driving or walking through the mall? Yes, sir, of course. Share with us. <laughs> Share with us. So you have to know your partner. You have to know what your husband likes and what your wife likes. So the, the foundation about it is that Valerie and I, we have a lot of things in common, period. We do have a lot of things in common. In addition to that, you know what the, the, your husband likes or your guy likes a clean environment, make sure that the home is clean for him. So whenever he goes out, he always wants to run back home. Um, his good food that he likes to eat. Um, above all, not only the food that goes into his stomach, the food that goes in his other stomach, you have to also keep that place. I know he likes it, so you have to keep it clean and neat, right? So, and then uh, always looking neat and sexy, and looking hot he likes women that are intellectual women that are, are intelligent and scholarly women and career driven women and women that you know so as a matter of fact i just fit the profile and it makes it just works great <laughs> thank you for <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you cannot have left without asking me that question. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, listen, listen, the same oh, goes yeah, that familiarity. One of the why I showcase him around is just to tell people that, hey, hey, back off. Back, back off. off. <laughs> You've yes. a lot of work here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you something else, Mrs. Fortune. <laughs> um, <laughs> Boy, uh, and I'm sure that Valerie is watching. Tell me a little bit. Um, what what are you going to tell men? Today is Father's Day. What are you going to tell men who think that sometimes they have to look le left and right? And, uh, by the way, gentlemen, if you like women in short skirts, why don't you make one for your wife? Exactly. <laughs> make one for exactly. your wife. If you if you if you like short skirts or you like the um, Victoria's Secrets, <laughs> go there and buy some for her. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I was not a polo raveler and polo person. I love my own kind of uh, uh, um, uh, silk and, and, but my husband is a polo person. So he makes sure he always provides the polo. If he wants me to wear polo, he, he makes me wear polo. He buys it and he provides it for me. If you want your wife to look a certain way, why don't you work on it? You, you can't just expect that it's gonna happen. Man, put in the work. Put in the work, right? Exactly. So in you want moment, to see your wife in some tight little stud, you guys do some dieting. 
go exercise with your wife, do things together. You see the side chicks looking like that. Somebody else is taking care of them. Do you think the girl just fell from somewhere like that? Oh no, somebody else is taking care of her the way I you see her. I see Majongan did nodding hair, and smiling. Home. That's why exactly. <laughs> that's why I brought him on the screen. <laughs> if you want your wife to look like you, the side chick, somebody is taking care of that side chick for her to look the way she's looking. You invest in your wife and, and make her look the way you want her to look. You, uh, you see Gante, me look like this. I am a product before. of Valerie Fortu. So hey. Yeah, I know. Major, Major I know you want those, to say something here? I know, I know that couple. I know them very well. And <laughs> that's just couple. Hey, yeah, yeah. And you, your premise is right. They're tight, and there is, uh, there is. She's nailed it. She said everything she needed to say about the uh, superficial. You know, especially what we all talk about here is mostly superficial. It's like the looks, the sex, even the sex itself is. So let's just say that it's all those things fleeting, but the real, the big things that really drive that I really want us to go back to is like it's overemphasized or not not overemphasized that the information that needs to be pushed out to you, the young women, the young women. I'm supposed to find young women because the literature indicates that the younger women who think they have plenty of life to still don't see why they should settle down in a longer relationship. When I say younger, I mean it's te late teens to the mid-20s. And they're the ones who are supplying a steady stream of, of women to this uh, flourishing industry. Now, the reasons again, or the issues they indicate that cause them to do it, some of them indicate uh, uh, financial support for school, uh, all those kind of things. The men on the opposite side are older men who are financially viable and able to be to support the females who are young and inexperienced. So again, until we identify that and tackle them separately, young females separately and the older men separately, then we will be talking about, we'll just be making social commentary, let me say this, unless we want to take onto separating this step. Medjong Gante. Today is Father's Day, and this is a special broadcast because we thought we should be saying something that relates to fathers. I have somebody connecting live now from the one of the most beautiful cities of Africa, that's Nairobi in Kenya. And when he finishes his commentary, it's about three, four minutes. I'll bring back the guest for their concluding remarks, and then we wrap off, wrap up the uh, broadcast this week at Chat Night Africa. Watch this. Ah, let's embrace innovative volunteerism. Today is Father's Day 2021. And the theme of my message to you all is selflessness. But I'll start off with an African proverb which goes thus. We desire to bequeath two things to our children. One is root and the other is winds. This African proverb speaks of the aspiration of fathers across the entire globe. They provide winds for their children. Fathers indeed occupy a special place in life. They prepare us for life. They teach us the ropes of life. They bequeath us blessings. They protect and they provide. They are the primary and the first example of leadership and responsibility we have in this life. They are our primary motivators to our life destiny. And today is their day and we are here to say a big thank you to all the fathers across the entire world. Thank you. The statue of a father goes far beyond serving children. One does not have to have biological children to be called a father, to earn the honor of a father, to be celebrated as we are doing today. Rather, as an insightful African proverb reminds us, be a mountain or lean on one. A father is one who is selfless enough to become a mountain that others lean on, who is visionary enough to show and nurture others to their destiny, who is strong enough to lead by example. Today, we remember fathers for their selflessness, for their endurance, for their sacrifices that are foundational for successful individuals, communities, societies, countries, continents, and the globe. 
On this monumental day, we honor fathers across the world who have inculcated values of selflessness, morality, boldness, hard work, and vision that are the foundation of success in any venture. But the big question is, with all that fathers do and represent, what do we give back? Nothing puts it better than this African proverb which says that to be as good as our fathers, we must be better. The only way we can repay and celebrate our fathers is to aspire and become better than them. And this is by taking the values associated with fatherhood a notch higher, where fathers are selfless to provide for their families, aspire to be selfless to the entire community, where fathers teach and are an example to the household, aspire to be an example to an entire continent and the world, where fathers inspire you to self-discipline, aspire to inspire an entire generation of African youth to self-discipline with that which we will not be able to advance much progress. That is um, uh, Dr. Richard Munang live from Nairobi, Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to bring our guests and they are going to take uh, their turns to uh, make their concluding remarks. Today is Father's Day. We are honoring fathers. Thank you, fathers, for the wonderful work that you do, for your leadership, for your service. Once more, Mechondiashi Ngante. <laughs> Sir, you are concluding remarks. Uh, sir, uh, uh, Divine, thank you very much for this platform and what you do. This is, let's not underestimate this. And uh, this is how we change society. And uh, I also want to thank uh, Dr. Dr. Mrs. Fortune for the passion on the subject. The, the allure of the subject is probably more attractive, but I want to bring in the boring, the boring part of it. Boring. It's, there is plenty, actually, uh, in one of the articles shared in the, in the link there, there are six main reasons for why they wouldn't let go of the side chick. First one is greed, selfishness, laziness, illusion, fear, and habit. In, if you see all those reasons listed, uh, none of them is actually sex. It's, these are all mental things. These are all issues about self-confidence, about mind. So those who participate in it, for us to go at this, we must evaluate whether the solution is in the mind or is in the superficials. The superficials can still go on if we attack the mental part and we can change it. And this is, again, I say I'm going to bring you the boring because this is where actual work is. Okay. We, we just, I'm not here just because I wanted to talk on chat night. I was hope, I'm hoping that we can actually evaluate each of us, each of ourselves and model a behavior that we can confidently say it's a dent into this issue. And this is only done if we look at the mental space we occupy, the mental activity that we engage in. And for yourself, you cannot do it for another person. You can only do it for yourself. Now, once you do it for yourself, then you could be a model to some other person. It's up to the other person to follow it. But again, let me just stay boring and emphasize that each of us, each of us got to model it, got to model it. And the, the society indicates, survey shows that younger women are a good supply of side chicks. Older men are a good supply of sponsors. So there you go. So do, are you in one of these categories? Are you an older man or are you a younger woman? Those, uh, I'm not saying others are not, but those are the major categories that Again, uh, let me just join you to say happy Father's Day to all the good fathers. And uh, Ryan, thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And at this point, we bring on Dr. Mrs. Veronica Fortu. And I'm going to be asking for her last word. Before I get to that, get this jingle. <laughs> Ooh. 
Dr. Mrs. Fortu, what are your words which you think, the message you think people should take home this evening? Tell us, give us some nuggets, how we can, how the side chicks market can close down. <laughs> Thank you so much for um, having me tonight, Channel Africa. I will be concluding tonight and I just want uh, a lot of people to take this home. So, you know, going after somebody's husband or somebody else's man is not okay. Is not okay. But I'm going to say that blaming the other woman or the side chick for the choices that the man makes is actually directing your anger and your frustration to a person who has no obligation to you. The side chick has no obligation to the main chick or the woman in the house. For a very long time now, cheating has been an issue that women have always cried out about their partners having side chicks mistresses or other women that are threatening the existence of their relationship or their homes and from the reports and what it sounds it seems as if men actually enjoy this they enjoy having other women they enjoy sneaking around with other women but i'm going to say that there's a lot of negative things and stress that is attached to it i want this man to take this back home because today is father's day that you remember that as today as you're celebrating this day as father as father's day remember the, the the negative aspect that you're sneaking around they might not have you know you're not gotten in trouble they, they haven't caught you yet, but trust me, they always do. And even though your wife is ready to forgive you one, two, three, four times, they eventually get tired. Just think about the extra expenses that you have to spend. You spend extra expensive. Cheating is very expensive. It's an expensive habit M most of the time. Even if you have a lot of money in your pocket, that's money that you should be preparing for your children, your grandchildren, you know? preparing for their future you're using it extra stress the stress of you having to always make up stories and tell lies to your wife going extra miles to to tell lies to cover up and accommodate time and always find time to sneak around to go see the other woman it's stressful even for your own your own self that's stressful why do you have to go through that when you can just spend your time with one woman fix what is not working in your home if something isn't working fix it fix what is not working amen fix what is not working what would be your excuse if your wife catches you what would be your excuse think about it's not just yourself you have a whole generation involved you got your in-laws involved you got you involved you got your friends involved you got all the weaknesses that stood to take part of of your wedding they're all involved what do you stand to tell them? The fact that you have been doing it over and over and over and over, now your moral compass isn't working anymore and it's very dangerous. You're in a dangerous place. If you're that person that has, you have a side chick and your children and your wife and you now, uh, 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 the, the guilt, your guilt conscience is numb. That is a dangerous place for you to be at. So you need to reconsider your steps. Think about STDs. Think about diseases. You can go out there. You have the side chick that is available. She does not have any obligation to you. She has no loyalty to you. She's also seen other people. You expose yourself to diseases that you can bring home to your wife. Think about it. When you're doing it, think about it. Are you ready to break your home? Are you ready? If they catch you, what do you want to do? So think about the consequences and how it affects your children and it affects even your own life. So as fathers today, you all just think about the consequences of your actions. All right. We cannot just keep blaming the side chick you as the man, as a father, it is your responsibility to uphold your vows and your commitment in your relationship and to your wife. If there's something that isn't working, fix it. The easy fix is not for you to just run away and go cry in the shoulders of another woman, have a few seconds of sex, and then you come home, you're feeling like you're, you're enjoying. Some people call it enjoyment. That is not enjoying. My dear, you're digging a grave for yourself. I ask yourself, that woman, that side chick that you have, if you fall down today, you have a heart attack and you're incapacitated, can she take care of you? Think about it.
All right. Thank you, uh, Dr. And Mrs. Veronica, for that vibrant, that resounding, um, vehement uh, denunciation of uh, the side chicks market. I, I sort of, I, I want to thank all of you, um, Mercy Nabi Foje, uh, Lyra Nana, Grace Ngu, and Neneba, and all of you. You have my permission to share this broadcast. I want to thank you, uh, Mavero, as I like to call you, and extend my greetings to your loving husband. Um, Valerie Fortune, also a military guy. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, ladies and gentlemen, that's how we wrap up this edition of Chat Night Africa. I want to thank you. Um, you can please share this broadcast. You watch the broadcast on chatnightafrica.net. Each time we come here, it's online live on the website. I brought a brand new broadcast website. I want to thank my uh, producer who is producing this broadcast all the way, thousands of miles away from the United States. He's in Lagos, Nigeria now. That's where this program is being produced. That's where my producer is, the guy who built our brand new website, Z Roja 4. Thank you, sir. I want to thank all the collaborators, all the donors, those who make this platform look the way it is. My name is uh, Divine Shamokong. I will be coming back next week for yet another edition of chat night. Happy Father's Day. Bye bye. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming. Coming to get down. I'm coming. I'm coming. Coming to dance. To dance. We're gonna dance. We're gonna dance. We're gonna get down. We're gonna get down, we're gonna party, party hard it, we're gonna boogie, boogie woogie, and when we jam, it's out of sight, this song right here, it's dynamite, I'm ready, I'm coming.